Right, thank you very much. Um, I'm going to try and demonstrate this. I, I only finished it yesterday, so it's a little bit buggy. But um, uh, it looks like a, a fairly ordinary robot, and really it is a fairly ordinary robot. I suppose what's novel about it is the control mechanism, which is this watch. Um, so I'll go into a little bit more detail about how this works. But you'll notice it's a little bit thick, this watch. It's got some goodies. Has anybody come across these Kronos watches? Yeah, lots of fun. I'll, I'll explain more in a minute. How much are they? They are they're about £40, Ooh, something like that. that. So they're a little bit... Uh, right, so you can just about do a class fall. Yeah, class fall. Yeah, class fall. Well, it's, it's got, got a lot on it. <laughs> just, this is, this well, is the can demo. So you can see I've got, got my watch there. And it's on the bench at the moment. So I lift my arm up with the watch on. And the acceleration in the watch spots that have gone up in the air. And it starts the motors. Tip one way, one motor goes faster than the other. Tip the other way, the other motor goes faster than. It's a little bit sleeping, never arm sleeping before. <laughs> <laughs> and then it goes off and it goes on again. So that's kind of the mechanism. Okay, so let's um, have a look at the next one. So here it is in action. So, there we go. Tom's interested already. He used to try and pounce on them actually, he stopped doing that now. He, <laughs> he was uh, in danger of getting very expensive because uh, he was quite interested. But not so much these days, become too, too regular. It's actually surprisingly hard to steer it well. Because you tend to sort of, uh, what would be great, you could have, some, I did wonder about having some continuous power so that it went from absolutely nothing there, it gradually got faster and faster and faster as you raised your arm, but in the end it just kind of went for on off, and then tilting it to change the angle. Okay. So the technology that's used to build this, um, this is where I get a few plugs in. Um, the motor controller is this board here, which is the Raspberry Robot board, uh, which is um, something I designed for Sparkfun Electronics. And unfortunately, I have absolutely no say on how much it's sold for. Um, I anticipated it being sold for about £12 a pop. Um, actually, they're selling it for, well, SK Pang is selling it for £21. And Spark, but it's the uh, best part of $30, I think, in Spark in the States. Um, but anyway, this is, this is the board. It's open source <coughs> design, so you're more than welcome to um, make your own, <laughs> get your own boards made, buy your own components. Um, I think. Uh, Kind of the way to go. So what it offers is primarily it's got an edge bridge motor control on it, um, L293 um, chip with the motor with the edge bridge. So you can control two motors bidirectionally. Um, it's got a few extra bits on it, mostly just stuff that's broken out. But one interesting thing is a low dropout voltage regulator. So this will provide the five volts through to the Raspberry Pi. So you only need one battery pack. So I've got a, a battery pack in here um, that's driving the motors and also supplying the power to the Raspberry Robot board, which is then supplying the five volts to the Raspberry Pi underneath it. And because it's a, a low dropout voltage regulator, the battery only has to stay half a, half a volt above five volts to, for it to be able to keep supplying power. So it's a lot less susceptible to the sort of grey ass that you get if you use a conventional voltage regulator that requires a couple of volts above. And these the these are ordinary batteries, not a twenty pound USB. Oh no, no, these it? are these are AAs. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, I, I use rechargeable because I mean the Raspberry Pi by itself will fairly rapidly uh, drain a set of batteries. Not using half an hour. So a um, few other things on the Raspberry Robot board. It's got a couple of switch inputs there and there, and it's got a couple of open collector outputs that you can use to drive fairly small loads, a couple of extra LEDs to drive with it, say. Um, it's got a couple of LEDs on as well. Uh, okay, so that's where you connect the motors. I also break out um, the serial connection um, and do a level shift to 5 volts, um, primarily because um, you can also get these nice, they're more expensive, but ultrasonic range finders like the, on the other yeah, Tim's robot. The, but they actually have, um, these ones have a serial interface um, with a li little adapter board, but unfortunately it, the, the, um, 
they have an inverted uh, signal, so you actually have to have a little for adaptable one transistor on it, which is fairly easy to make on strip board if you want to as well. Uh, so you can connect to serial peripherals to that. Also means, has anybody discovered the um, USB serial cables? Yeah, with a little four pins on the end of it as a, an alternative to using SSH or whatever on your Raspberry Pi. Mm -hmm. So you just get, I meant to bring it along and I forgot. So it's USB one end for um, trailing single pin sockets that you can just clip directly either directly onto the GPIO header onto the ground uh, 5 volts and it also has the power you're actually applying. Ground 5 volts TX and RX and um, then you can just open up a, a serial communications uh, in a serial terminal onto the Raspberry Pi as if you're using SSH but you know not having to have any network connection. So that's that quite useful. So again you can you can actually plug that uh, directly into one of them. And then I've also broken out the I squared C interface as well. So the, Looking for in header, so if you wanted to plug in some I squared C displays or something like that, um, you could do. Okay, so it's <coughs> one piece of technology. And the other piece of technology is this um, this watch, which is um, the only watch I've ever bought that actually comes with two dongles one for programming it and one for um, actually uh, providing an RF link between the watch and your computer. <coughs> so it's got a built-in pressure sensor, it's got a built-in three-axis accelerometer, uh, an RF transceiver, so it'll work like a wireless accelerometer, which is how I'm using it to control the robot. Um, and it basically sends out the X, Y, and Z data over and over and over again, and then the dongle you plug into your computer, um, and it comes with software for that too, or into your Raspberry Pi, and the driver's are already on the Raspberry Pi to receive this just as serial. So you can use the Pi serial library and just connect to USB 0, I think it is, and then you just get the serial data stream coming from the um, watch. Um, and you can get it to do all sorts of things. And, and you can actually take the body out of the watch, and it's got a little 4-pin programming interface. And that's what the second dongle that you get, that's more than 4 pin. The second dongle you get, you plug into the USB and you plug your watch innards on that end, and you actually reprogram the entire watch. Um, it's uh, I haven't tried doing that yet, but it uses the um, Texas Instruments chip, the um, uh, based on this family, the 430 uh, family of microcontrollers. Uh, somebody has just interestingly produced um, ported a lot of the Arduino code to this platform. So one of the things I want to try next is to see if I can get so basically get. Arduino running on my watch. Like okay. Uh, yes, the, uh, 44 pounds they are from CPC. Uh, they, they're cheaper in America, so I don't, it may even be cheaper with the postage coming from America. I've seen the dying out now as well. They're not going to be making any more. Are they? The accelerometer that's in, so obviously it's been a good port, not ah, redoing Okay. That's a shame because they're, they're, they're not fun really. There's yeah. a Bluetooth version as well now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so get them all where you can. Okay, so how's it actually put together? Um, the chassis for this is, I mean, again, it's a, it's a similar concept to see your um, uh, shrimp bot type thing, and it's a laser cut one, but this is a commercial one I bought. Um, and you get a kit which has the gear motors, um, the chassis, and it's called the Magician chassis, and I think. About 15 quid, 15 quid, something like that, which isn't bad really, um, you know, including the gear yeah. motors and the wheels and the battery box actually. Although <coughs> I've replaced this battery box and start firing this up as soon as well, um, with the one that takes six AA batteries just to give it a bit more headroom. And leave that. And put it on the floor because it has a nasty habit of kind of taking off. Feel free to stand up and have a look around if you want to come and grab it. Yes, yeah, look, come and grab it. Yes, so it's built with a magician chassis and the gear motors, the Raspberry robot board to control the motors. And then what I actually do with the phone is I've got um, the Y axis controls the on and off power to the motors, and then the X axis, if it's above a threshold to one side, it it's, um, speeds up one motor, if it goes to the other side, it's, oh, it goes to the other. That's something that's ready. So I have to put the phone into accelerometer mode. Okay. 
So little green lights come on over there. So it should be ready to go. Have a word for children and robots, that's what you say. <laughs> I can see it getting the signal. You see, this is why you do a video of this, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Rule one of robot theory. Proves it's live. Yeah, well, it does prove it's live, but that's. It does prove it's live. <laughs> yeah. I'm not even in this one. It's only got the signal, you can see it, can't you? Yeah. Hey! Oh, okay. okay. So then, go that way, goes that way. Go that way, go that way. Oops, I haven't got the verse. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, so why should I end up doing hit the sleeves with this? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think you probably needed to give it to the younger members, yeah, and they could probably yeah. show you how to see it. Somebody who's conscious of the stereo toys. <laughs> Right, um, that, so that's that's how it all works really. The password modulation, I'm not using anybody's library for this, I've just done a very crude um, bit of code to do it. I just um, have one outer loop that does the inner loop a hundred times, and inside the inside the inner loop, um, on a count of <coughs> 16, for a particular cheers, um, duty cycle, um, if the if the duty cycle is less than the count, then it stays on and then it drops off as soon as it falls after that. So you just adjust the, uh, the duty cycle for a pulse on a standard width of 16 uh, things. There's no attempt to do any other kind of timing for that, it just does it as fast as it possibly can. So it makes one of the motors spin just a little bit faster than another. Okay, um, and these are just some, I've put these slides in case anybody wants them up on SlideShare. Um, so if you have a look up at um, SR Monk on the SlideShare, there's some things on there, and that's our Twitter, and other like details. Okay, if you're interested in the Raspi Robot Board, um, there's a website for them, or as I say, they're also on the spot the Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So has anyone got any questions for Simon while it's up there? What I'm planning on doing is maybe me having a bit of a session, then getting Amy to speak up and give us a little chat, and finishing half past eight-ish, so then we can mull around and chat. You know,